This video is a short student tutorial for those using Kurzweil3000.com to take tests or benchmarks. First, start by going to your internet browser. Type in Kurzweil3000.com. Once this screen comes up, you're going to see a space for a username and password. This is where you will input the username and password that your teacher has given to you or someone else at the district has provided you with. In this example, I'm going to use a student named Kevin Goodrich. So I'll put his username and password information in now. Once logged in, I'm going to have my main screen here that's going to show my universal library. You'll see some folders over here to the left, and your folder will always be at the top as a student, and it will always be yellow. You'll see this here with your name next to it and your username. Your campus or your district folder will be beneath that, and that will always be in red. This is where uh, information may be stored from the district level, such as past uh, star tests or things like that for you to practice with. Any teachers that you have that have you on their team will be below that and their folders are always going to be in purple. So each level of folder is going to have a public folder and your folder will have a private folder. This is where you can store different things such as tests, benchmarks, quizzes, textbooks, anything like that. In this example, we're going to access a test that my teacher has placed in the public folder for me to open up and take a look at. So I'm going to navigate to my teacher's folder here, click public, and then I see here I've got my test over here that she was wanting me to take a look at. So I click that. and it'll bring up my test. You'll see up here at the top our toolbar for all of our different options and the different things that we can utilize are gonna be up here at the top. First here I have my main menu. If I hit library, that will take me right back to that page that we were just at, showing me all the different folders with mine in the district level and the teachers. If I hover over the audio options, I'll see some of the things that I can change here, such as the voice. I've got a long list of voices that I can choose from. I can change the reading speed to suit my particular needs. I can speed it up or slow it down. And by default, it's going to be set to continuously read. So what that means is once I hit the read button, it will read until I tell it to stop, until I pause it. This is the selection for continuous here. If I wanted to have that as self-paced, or maybe your teacher is going to want you to have it as self-paced, you can select this option here, and that's going to read it line by line if you choose it so, sentence by sentence if you choose so, or paragraph by paragraph. And every time it stops one of those units, you will have to click the read button again to make it read. I'm going to leave it on continuous here for the sake of this video. So if I click my read button, the program will begin to read. Read the selection and choose the best answer to each question. Make the answer on the document. I click pause to stop it. If I look at some of my other options on my toolbar here, I've got my highlighter. This is what I can use to highlight text. We'll look at in a moment how I can use this to answer questions. The next is going to be my view. Right now I have it to fit the screen. So you see this fit with button here and I have a check mark in it. If I wanted to make the text bigger or smaller by zooming in or out, I would uncheck this and then use my slider here to either make the zoom out or zoom in. Next on my toolbar, I have my document notes. This is what you would use to add a note to the side of a page if you needed to take any notes or if your teacher wanted you to leave any notes on a page. So I could select my sticky note 
and then anywhere I click on the page, it's going to place a sticky note. If you notice right now, on the arrow for my mouse, there is a sticky note icon below it. That means that the sticky note is turned on. So anytime that I click while that icon is there on my mouse pointer, it's going to drop a sticky note in. So if I click over here to the side, I see it adds my sticky note. And this is where I could add my notes. When I'm finished with my notes, I can resize this box any way I need to. So now that I'm done with my note, you see that I still have the sticky note icon on my mouse pointer. If I were to click again, it's going to drop another sticky note in. So what you want to do every time you're finished with a note is come back up to your document notes tab and make sure that you have that you click select to take that sticky note off. Since I've placed this one down here on accident, I want to remove it. So the same process, I'll go to notes and this time I'm going to want to choose delete. And you'll see now there's a red X on my mouse pointer. So any note that I click with this red X on it, it's going to remove that. Same thing when I'm finished removing notes, I'm going to want to come back up here and choose my select. Next on our toolbar is the references. If this is where I would choose uh, a word that I wanted to look up a definition of, see a picture of it, or get translation for it. So we'll scroll down and click and drag over the word astronaut. It's going to select it there and highlight it in this sort of orange color. And I could come back up to reference, choose dictionary, and now I've got a, diction or a definition of the word astronaut. I can listen to this by coming up to my read button and hitting read. Hit pause to make it stop reading. I'll have a drop down menu of dictionaries here. So I'll see a few different choices and I can use that depending on what grade level I am. And I can also select the picture dictionary from here to get a picture of that word. So you see now I've got my picture of an astronaut. If I close this out and go back up to my reference tab, I can choose picture dictionary from here. If I didn't, if that's all I wanted to see and I didn't want to get the actual definition of it, I could just choose the picture from there. And then I can also translate. So I'm going to try translation here. This box is going to come up. This is going to be my word that I'm translating. And over here is going to be the language that I want to translate it into. So if I choose my drop down menu, I can translate it into any of these languages. And then I can hear only these bolded ones up here. I can hear that out loud. So if I choose Spanish and I hit translate, now I've got my Spanish word. And if I want to listen to that word, I just simply click read. And I have the translation for that word. The final thing on my toolbar is going to be the tools drop down menu. And this is going to be mainly used for writing, which we will talk about in another video. But some of the other things on it are choosing the background color. So if I need to change the background color of my page, I can do that here. I simply come down here to the drop down menu and select which background color I'd like to change it to. I'm going to change it back to white, and we're going to look at some more things on this page. So if you've been assigned a test or a benchmark, or if it's just a simple reading assignment, whatever your teacher has wanted you to access through Kurzweil, she may have, he or she may have put some things in it that they want you to have more clarification on, or maybe they have some more instructions on. So if you see any of these purple question marks, that means that the teacher has placed a support there and they want you to read it. 
So if I'm reading through here and I see the one of these, I'm going to click that. And I see that my teacher has placed something there for me to read more about aided space exploration. If I go forward a few pages to where there are some questions on this test, we'll look at how you can use the highlighters to answer those questions. So if I read my question number one here, and I decide that I want to answer A is the correct answer, I come up to my highlighters, choose whichever highlighter your teacher wants you to use for correct answers. We'll use yellow for this example. And I can highlight A. And then maybe your teacher wants you to use the cross out tool to eliminate your incorrect answers. And that's where I would come back up to highlight and all the way to the bottom to cross out. and I can cross out my incorrect answers. If you make a mistake or if you decide that you want to change your answer, simply come back up to highlight, down to erase, and erase anything that you want to change. Those are some of the main things that your teacher is going to have you using to take tests and benchmarks in Kurzweil 3000. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.